of the Falmouth Conservation Commission. Please silence your electronic devices. If you're going to have a private conversation, please take it outside. First up, we have a presentation by Andrew Poyant, DEP circuit rider on the Coastal Bank Restoration. Welcome and thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, just a little background. I'm, so I'm the circuit rider. For those of you who don't know, uh, as the circuit rider, I'm here to provide assistance, um, technical and administrative assistance to the conservation commissions, the 84 conservation commissions throughout the Southeast region. Um, I have worked as a wetland scientist in consulting for 10 years. And then I worked at, um, as a conservation agent for a short period of time before this position opened up and I moved over to DEP. Um, in my undergrad, I, I did some research with one of my professors on um, the vegetative secession on um, a dune, dune area in um, Mashpee where we would look at different vegetation, what was coming in, and, and the different um, soil and and sunlight and um, and salinity, and we would look at different parameters out there. Um, I also got the worst poison ivy rash that I've ever had that summer. Poison ivy is particularly dominant on on coastal dunes. So today I'm I'm here to give you a presentation on on the basics of restoration of coastal resources and invasive species control. Uh, most of what I'm going to present is from the CZM Storm Smart Properties Fact Sheet on planting vegetation to reduce erosion and storm damage. So what I'm going to go over today is the review of performance standards, benefits of vegetated habitats, when doing restoration, uh, what best management practices are, and the maintenance that needs to be done on those habitats. <coughs> the performance standards for coastal beach and coastal bank are uh, the main part of it when it relates to vegetation is that you shall not have an adverse effect by increasing erosion, decreasing the volume, or changing the form of any coastal beach. And for coastal bank, you shall not have an adverse effect due to wave action on the movement of sediment from the coastal bank to coastal beaches or land subject to tidal action. So in removing vegetation, um, you are potentially impacting the, the resource areas and if it's not conditioned properly, you, you may not be in compliance with the performance standards. For coastal dunes, it's uh, a bit more strict as well and the, the area that I'm focusing on is the disturbing of vegetation, vegetative cover so as to disturb the dune um, shall not be allowed. Um, some of the benefits of using vegetation. Um, <clears throat> when you use native salt tolerant uh, plants that have extensive root systems, they reduce erosion um, by, by holding on to the sand and they slow down the water both from rain and wave action or tidal action. And they reduce, if, if flooding is occurring, they reduce the flooding as it comes through the land. Plants help build up dune volume as sand is blown in. Um, the, it hits the plant and settles down in front of the plant and helps build up the dune, which protects our houses and other infrastructure. Um, and <coughs> so we want to protect our natural habitats uh, and our coastal resource areas. And so we should try to limit um, 
foot traffic and plants, especially thorny plants or um, other plants that people wouldn't particularly want to come across, it's, it's good to line areas um, when, when doing a pathway with plants that will keep out people. Some of the differences when you're looking at hard shorelines or vegetated shorelines, a hard shoreline, you're causing more problems, right? So you're reflecting and redirecting waves onto beaches and neighboring properties. Whereas a vegetated shoreline, you're absorbing and slowing down that wave action. Um, and you're also preserving the natural character of the coastal environment and providing wildlife habitat. Uh, as I'm sure you are aware, um, you're only able to use hard structures for buildings that were permitted prior to August 10th, 1978, and only if there are no other feasible alternatives. So when doing restoration, um, you, some of the best management practices, you wanna protect the plants until they're fully estab established and they're strong, have a strong root system and are able to withstand the harsh conditions that occur in coastal habitats. Different ways of doing that, um, you can install <coughs> a natural fiber blanket. Um, one of the recommendations that I've kind of learned over the years is I, I personally don't like to see them in areas where there's frequent water wave action um, you know, infrequent flooding is one thing. I've, I spent a lot of time on the Hudson River um, doing monitoring out there, and I would see these erosion control blankets get pulled up, and it just tore all of the vegetation with it. So, you know, two, three-year-old site of being restored, you just lost all of the vegetation you're starting back at from scratch one, from step one. Um, so, you know, if it's further up and it's not always getting hit with wave action, then it's a good, a good spot to use it. Temporary baffles um, of natural fiber materials for shelter and installing sand fencing. Sand fencing is preferred over using dead vegetation. Um, dead vegetation, you, in order to slow down wind, you oftentimes, if there's a big storm coming through, that can end up causing more erosion problems. <coughs> um, it's important, uh, one recommendation is to seed and plant. So as the seed will end up germinating and coming up quickly, as the plantings that were done take time for the root system to establish, and you also have different heights of um, plants, so that way it, it protects it from different levels of, of storm water, um, whether it's coming from rain or from coastal flooding. It's important to, to water. I'll get into that in more detail later. Um, and you, know, you should also try to prevent storm water um, runoff from coming through and just wiping out all of all of the plant plantings that were done. So if you're able to redirect that um, in a way that isn't going to cause more erosion, that is important. Straw bales, um, I'm sure if you aren't familiar, straw bales are preferred over hay bales for invasive species, um, seeds can often end up coming in the hay. Straw bales can be used at the base of a bank to help protect against wave action. Um, and coir rolls can also be used in newly planted areas to protect the, the bank. And you know, as, as I mentioned previously, you wanna try to keep, restrict pedestrian access um, in these areas while they're establishing and, and overall in order to help them thrive. 
plant selection. So I provided one. Uh, I provided two handouts for you today. One of the handouts goes over the plants that are native and have adapted to coastal habitats, um, to these specific coastal habitats that you regulate. And it's recommended to use those plants. They have um, they have extensive root systems, which help to hold everything together in order to reduce erosion, erosion problems. Um, and, and these habitats can be pretty harsh, depending, you know, you get strong winds and salt. Um, the soil tends to be low in nutrients, so it's important to use native species. Um, just a few highlights, since I'm not going to list all of the species that you should use because it's there in the handout. But um, American beach grass, where it's preferred to be used in dunes, it can be used in banks to initially stabilize it, but you need to use other vegetation as well because over time the beach grass needs the continual um, sand in and it won't thrive on, on the banks, so it's good to supplement with other species as well. Uh, and you should try to avoid using large shrubs and trees on the face of the bank, because as a storm comes, those trees will uproot and end up destabilizing and eroding the bank even more. So it's okay to put, it, put them further back, just not on the face Removing and replacing invasive species, um, <coughs> it's, it's suggested to remove invasives if they are um, preventing the establishment of erosion control vegetation. So if they're, they're species that um, are just choking out all of the other native species in the area, and if those species, especially if those species are not, um, don't have deep root systems and aren't stabilizing the bank or the dune. Um, and you also want to make sure that they're on the state invasive species list, which I provided to you. <coughs> um, successful control of invasive species, it can take years or longer to eradicate invasive species. And one of, <coughs> it's, it's important to sequence it so that way um, you don't end up having a long period of time from when invasive species are managed and pulled or treated and the time that you are planting the native species because you're exposing the soil and it is then likely to erode. Um, so, you know, trying to make sure that it's timed up really well. And whenever possible, you want to remove the invasives by, by hand. You want to try to avoid having heavy equipment out there, which um, can create more problems. So irrigation is recommended during the growing season for the first three years. And provided there's no drought, it's recommended to slowly have less water over those three years so that at the third year, you're only minimally um, using it, using the irrigation system. For beach grass, it really only requires um, being irrigated if it's a particularly dry season and um, and then potentially only for you know a maximum of 40 s four to six months while the roots establish if it is a really hot and dry summer. You want to be cautious of excessive watering. You don't want to end up increasing erosion problems by watering too much and you also don't want to end up watering so much that you're getting species that, that are out competing the salt tolerant species with species that are not salt tolerant because of all the fresh water from, from irrigation. 
Um, some other best management management practices are using wetting agents, um, beneficial microbes, and organic compost. Organic compost both helps by <coughs> by um, it in it helps with water retention, and as most of these areas are really sandy with low nutrients, it increases the nutrients in the soil. Um, and wi with composting, you know, it's not, you don't have to do it regularly. If you do it in the beginning, help them establish. So with scheduling the plants, you want to, you want to schedule the planting shortly after, you want to time it of remove invasive species and put in the new native plants. The best time to put in the new native plants for the vast majority of species is early to mid spring. This way, it gives you more time, to, it gives them the most time to be able to establish before the winter, which is the harshest time of the year um, for new plantings. And with the exception of beach grass, um, beach grass for some reason loves to be planted in the winter as long as the ground's not frozen. So, you know, as you can see here, this bank is not stabilized um, and they could use some vegetation on it to, to help stabilize it. But you said the shrubs aren't appropriate. I would not recommend. Beach grass is going to have a terrible, what would you do with that bank? I, I would put in some of the other um, grasses that we, let's see. So we have, so switchgrass or a little blue stem. So if we go back here, I would, uh, yeah, I would say switchgrass or a little blue stem. Um, I actually have, I didn't put this in here because it was a PDF, but it shows, <coughs> you get, Little blue stems with switchgrass, American beachgrass. You can get between four and all the way to eight feet in each for root system. Mm -hmm. So, compared to just turf grass, which is you know, less than a foot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend putting, putting any shrubs on there. But if you end up putting little blue stem and switchgrass, it, it'll help. It's not, it's not permanent. The sea's going to do what it does, but it'll slow it down. And I would also recommend taking out some of that lawn that's on top and restoring that with native vegetation that has a longer root system um, as well. So in order for... Uh, a restoration project to work. Um, it needs maintenance and it needs ins regular inspections. Both the, the maintenance and inspection plan should be provided in the notice of intent, uh, detailing how frequently they're gonna go out there. If there's damage, how quickly they're going to address it. Um, you know, at what level of storm will they go out if, if there's, if they're going out quarterly or once every few months will they go out um, after large storm events and having that in there um, and making sure that they're replacing dead plants as well as addressing any, any situations that come up due to storms. These are some of the references that I've used. Um, I provided the invasive species list and the coastal landscaping um, list, I, I predominantly use the fact three, uh, fact sheet three list, um, and fact sheet three for this presentation. There's also many other fact sheets that CCM has there that can be used. And I can provide these links to you, um, so that way if you want to read through it yourself as well. So just kind of in summary, there's, when doing ecological restoration, there's some pretty basic principles, you know, using native plants that 
are there, looking and seeing what is on site. Um, I often look from the bottom up. So, you know, especially if it's a wetland, like a bordering vegetative wetland or a salt marsh, you want to make sure that you're getting the hydrology that you need. Once you have the hydrology, you want to look at the soils. Is it the right soils? And then if you're looking at the then once you're looking at the plants, are you putting in the right plants? Are you putting in, I and the best thing to do is look around. What is successful? What is working here that is native, you know, besides the invasives, what will likely succeed is what is in the neighboring area. Um, and, you know, also helping the plantings and seed seedlings establish in the first few years is, is very important and eradicating, maintaining um, the removal of invasive species during that time frame. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Questions, comments? One of the principal things that gives me a problem is that our regulations uh, protect the, re the buffer areas along with the actual resource area, along with the bank, the, the more or less flat area on top of the bank. Right. We often require mitigation because of some uh, incursion into that buffer area and we require some additional area to be mitigated, replanted. And on the top of the bank, it's sort of flat. We're not too worried about storm damage or wind or something. We're mostly concerned about habitat restoration or creation, because often these areas are grassy and, and, uh, and we get presentations from uh, uh, landscapers who go down the list and say, okay, I'm gonna use big hairy blueberry and blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna put them on three foot centers and done. And it seems to me that this has relatively little to restore in habitat. It just has, it just meets the, what the regulations have been right. in the past. And how do we get to understanding what will actually recreate or create a habitat? So, <clears throat> there's different ways to look at that. And I would say one way is if there is a natural habitat that you are trying to create, to go and look at that habitat and see what you have in that area. Do um, You could do a couple of you know, documentation plots if you wanted and document what vegetation is there, um, how many of different species are there, and try to get a better number of, you know, you, you wanna have a mixture of these species. I'm, I'm also, I know that there is a certain guidelines. I'm gonna try to look into it and see um, with how many species that you need to plant, what, how, and with how many plantings you have, how many species there should be. Um, and I, I was trying to, I forgot to add that in there, but I will try to look into that and get back to you. But I would say between Using references is always is always good. So if you have a reference area that you can check to check. We often end up with something which is XDX plants on three feet centers in each direction. It looks like somebody is right. trying rather than a, some type of habitat. Maybe it serves best. I don't know. We're trying to understand what makes a habitat. So how can we proceed with guiding people on what to do? I recommend that there be diversity in what is planted <coughs> and also include <coughs> seeding too. Um, so if you are planting shrubs, include native grasses in between the shrubs and the protection of the two will help protect. It, they play different functions both for habitat and for um, stabilizing the soil. And, um, but yeah, I mean, only planting 
one or two species is not ideal unless it's a really yeah small area but still it there should be some diversity thank you yeah. good you have a question comment um, are you going to provide a copy of the uh, presentation i can do that yeah <laughs> he has to doesn't he yeah at least yeah, one thousand. Public record. We, we oh, okay. Need it. Yeah, I'll provide Please. it. Okay. And and you could have it forwarded to each member. Yeah. We'll ask Mr. No, yeah, Peter, we're going to keep it secret with us. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, just I've already, I've already email it to me. Okay. okay. And I'll, like I said, I'll email the the link to here as well. I mean, I'll, pretty much all the information is is in the CZM. Thank you. I just want to thank you for coming tonight. And yeah. the word circuit writer, where does that come from? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Non-technical basis, what? I, I, I honestly don't. Do you don't. cover a certain area? So, yeah, so I, so I'm the circuit, I'm a circuit writer and an analyst, and the circuit writer half is the outreach and education throughout the southeast region southeast region yes so you go from new bedford to i go from attleboro uh, to to braintree to p-town the islands it's uh, 80 it's like a legislative district yeah <laughs> steve there are but four thank you for joining us i think uh, correct me if i'm wrong andrew there are four four regions four regions in the state oh my god and the southeast region is their main office is out of Lakeville. Oh, thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for inviting me. And I concur. Thank you for being here. Thank you. But it makes sense. The southeast region is where you get all these sandy glacial environments. So <laughs> it makes great sense. So you get lots of. So all of us looking at the example that you put up said, well, the first thing we'd have them do. Is, is plant, you know, woody woody bushes along the top right. of that. You know, whatever you're going to do, you want to stay. You know, right. you want to stabilize the top. You want employment. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So but anyway, thanks. That was good. Welcome, Lauren. Um, I just had a couple questions. Um, you said that um, not to plant any trees, you know, s along coastal banks. So on the face on of the face coastal of banks. banks. So let me go back. Like that. Okay. So here, I wouldn't plant any trees or large growths through my land. You can plant them up here, but if you plant them here, the first storm that comes, they'll take hold of and uproot and okay. make a much bigger mess. Than All right. The reason I'm asking that is on coastal banks, at least around here, I'm not familiar with the southeast region, just my little spot right here in Selma. Um, naturally, cedars, oaks, cherries, mm -hmm. feed themselves on these coastal banks as little teeny seedlings, and they grow, 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 and their roots actually grow faster than their top, so they start to stabilize a bank. So would it be practical not, I understand we, we don't encourage large plantings of any sort on coastal banks because the area that they have to disturb in order to dig the hole, we know that they it's they get set back anyway. Um, it takes three years for them to even establish a root system after they've been transplanted from a nursery. But a native seedling, you know, little small stuff that goes on coastal banks because of their root structure. I mean, these grasses are great, but their roots go 24, 18 to 24 inches versus, you know, tree roots go even deeper. So you shouldn't even encourage small plantings on coastal banks? So the native grasses that are adapted for here um, can can grow to be to have a root system that's four to eight feet deep, deep which I agree is not as deep as a tree. Um, but that's still... But they don't have that issue of yanking out and pulling. They're going to be down right, and right. no resistance to weather. Okay, that's, uh, that's good information. 
I, I mean, I, I'm not saying that if they're naturally coming up, someone should go and take them down. But I wouldn't recommend planting them on the face. Well, only when we have restorations, a lot of times they'll requi request that they remove the tree that was pruned improperly, which that's another whole issue, um, you know, for views. So the grasses make more sense because then they're not going to go up there and cut them down. But um, to remove a disfigured, improperly pruned native oak or cedar, um, their root systems are extremely important. Right. And in nature, nothing is perfect. I know those little pictures in the books where they're all the perfect yeah. oaks and the cedars, but nature will make, you know, deformed trees as wind and weather break them and whatever. I'm not saying that I recommend removing those okay. if that's what you're Okay, that's asking. what I wanted to hear. Thank you. Um, the next thing is watering. Um, that was really informative uh, for the reduction over the three-year period because we've never Me required too. that. They just say they're going to water for three years. So it's basically like you, know, you don't even wean them off. They just do three years. They're used to being in water, and then you go, oh, no more, <laughs> and then they die. And that could be why a lot of these projects, mm -hmm. when we see when they start, they pull off the irrigation. So, and the salinity is important because we see that, you know, on areas where there's stormwater runoff, you know, the invasives seem to do much better mm -hmm. because they're getting fresh water. Um, and they, uh, they, you know, outcompete even the new plantings. Um, then the next question I have, when you said look side to side to see what plants are, are Stable relatively <laughs> the same. Unfortunately, in most cases, there you know when we when we find or go to a site that the neighbors have or the people have a non-invasive infested site, we are so excited. Like when it's only ten to twenty percent, mm -hmm. um, usually it's eighty to ninety percent invasives, and um, and we hardly ever see it. We hardly. <laughs> Ever but there are a few gems in town. There are a few, and um, it, it is unfortunate that we don't have a database, you know, going back to, you know, whenever. But there are places like in the DCPC and the Great Sipuissant Marsh and Black Beach that it is 90% all native on the shoreline, which, you know, it's almost a monoculture, just cedar, uh, bayberry, um, beach plum, and amasa. But harsh. Can and, and take a harsh and take a harsh and you know and the grass thing I, you know th a lot of those species need the wind blown sand to keep them going and so I had a question about these grasses because a lot of our um, landscape architects and you know consultants that are well versed in this will want to plant a blanket of grasses to hold everything but if it holds everything then there's no sand transport for some of these species that need to have a constant sand transport, like beach grass. You know, as it moves, it, it keeps building up. I don't know. But it evolves. The, a beach yeah. grass area, that's where you study. Beach grass, as it matures, you get other stuff coming in. I haven't, s I don't see that. Well, all the dunes you see that have, that have woody vegetation, originally they started as sand dunes right. with beach grass. And then the beach grass gets thicker, mm -hmm. and there's more nutrients there. They might they might trap rack that gets there mm -hmm. at some point, and then eventually bushes can go in. So it's there's a succession. Okay. You answered that well. Yeah. 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 Well, I I'm, I just don't. All right. That's all. Thank you. It's uh, it's a good question, uh, but yeah, it's it's complicated i mean i would say there still is some sand movement from from wind and um and if i mean if it's a hard uh shore shoreline you know if you're using hard engineering then you're cutting that off compared to vegetate native vegetation and if it's native vegetation i mean it's not going to be a hundred percent ground cover so there still would be some movement that way as well and do you have a preference on size? Does size have a benefit, small versus large? Yeah. When we plant these, or or you kind of said a sequential, you know, maybe not 
to new the entire thing and plant whatever, you know, do it in sections? There's because pros and cons to that. So if you're dealing with invasive species, it's best to, you know, do it all at once because if you end up only taking out a certain section and not the next section, it's just going to creep in. Well, most of these properties have abutters that haven't done anything, so it's a redundant process. Yeah. It's an, yeah, a never I mean, it's really process. a visitor killing is what it ends up as, and then, you know. Um, you have to be patient. Succession takes time. Well, th they open up all, the, you know, when you say bring in compost, most of these natural places, and I mean, I don't know where people get non-weed seed <coughs> compost. Um, you know, that's been cooked to a certain temperature, so they're not bringing in invasives, which we all see knotweed come everywhere. Every, yeah, everywhere. Um, because that's the, right. the compost kind of thing. I know you don't have the answers to everything, but we're trying to, <laughs> I just want to be able to, when we have these projects, we've been, you know, we've sort of been beaten over the head for so many years that this is how you do it. And we're not, we're not, I guess I'm not feeling warm and fuzzy to get those results right away. And I know it's five to seven years or whatever, um, but. I just find clear cutting coastal banks of every single thing to plant natives. Uh, how is that? Yeah. How's that work so well? They end up, they, they're literally like that, but then they put the jute mat and they stick little shrubs in it. It's a good question. Mm. And you don't have the answer either. I, <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, the oh. invasives are not, they're not easy. No, they're not. That's why they're invasive, Basic. right? Well, we are too, so you know, we're not easy. Thank you. Yeah. When I, I'm in talking about like other ha other Ooh. habitat issues, you know, you want to reduce, minimize, and mitigate. But if you're dealing with, you want to take out invasives and put in natives. It, it's kind of looking at it differently. So, yeah, it's not a necessarily easy question. We're dealing with something that's come in and takes over and isn't necessarily easy. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to hear your question. No, I'm not going to ask a question. Are you crazy? Um, first off, Andrew, I would uh, like to thank you for coming. Uh, I found this evening's discussion very informative, and uh, as well as the, the site vi visit that you were kind enough to go with uh, a few of us and some of the staff who are willing to go out in the field with us. Wow. <laughs> but. That said, uh, you must feel sorry for a guy that uh, w for his whole life was trained as an engineer because if this is, I think, my second year at this and I've yet to see a formula anywhere and certainly not something on a piece of paper says that do the following 12 things and you get an equal sign and there's the answer. And perhaps if you could ponder this, you could send us a, a, an email sometime uh, with that kind of conclusion. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I don't think I'll be getting to that kind of conclusion. <laughs> um, I, you know, I would be happy if there are a few reference sites in the town to go out and, and we could look at them and try to see what, we, what you would want to replicate and, you know, for different projects and and try to see what different ratios might make sense um, but you know using the thought of having more than one species and more than one strato species so having you know grasses and forbs the wildflowers right and shrubs and and trees 
if one th and different species of those, if one thing fails, another thing works. It's kind of like, you know, you just throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and whatever sticks works. It's it's not it's not easy. And then on top of that, you're dealing with the fact that invasives are coming in and choking it out at the same time. So what's gonna? It's not an easy question. I understand. Thank you. So I, I have two comments. One is for you, but, but one is for my fellow commissioner here. And that's why you're an engineer and not a biologist. <laughs> Very good. Um, the other thing I just want to mention, and it starts out with, with what Mark said to start out with, part of it is wildlife habitat, but you've stressed, and, and I just want to re-emphasize the importance of both our buffer planning and any kind of uh, bank stabilization of, of the role of these woody indigenous plants in stabilizing the soil. So, I mean, plus, the, plus they take up nitrogen that's in the water that's falling from the rain. So there are multiple things that, are, right. that buffers do, multiple roles that they play. And natives tend to have more wildlife function than right. invasives or lawn. Right, mm -hmm. right. Well, much more, yeah. yeah. Lawn doesn't have much. Right. Right. But that said, <laughs> if you don't do anything to the lawn, like I said to one of our engineers at one time, you fertilize lawn because lawn takes up nitrogen. Mm -hmm. So if you plant a lawn where you don't fertilize, fertilize it'll natural then nitrogen. it'll take up natural nitrogen. Right. So, but, and I also want to thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you. Very informative. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Next up, minutes of May 22nd. I read it and I, I had nothing. As usual, it was a wonderful set of minutes, very useful. And so I'd like to make a motion to accept as discussed. Second. I mean, accept as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Minutes of June 5th. Betsy? Make a motion to accept as given to us. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Next up, request to amend the order of conditions. Bruno Gallinelli, Fagio LP 117, Surf Drive, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to amend. Still have to read that. It's not a notice. Yes, it is. It's, an, it's amending an order of conditions. It's amending. Oh, amend the order. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It is Pardon me. The order of <coughs> I, I know. All hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. As I was saying, Bruno Gallinelli, Fagio. LP 117 Surf Drive, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to amend DEP 25-4322 by rearranging approved concrete patio and replacing existing gravel driveway with pavers. Matt, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Matt Costa, Cape and Islands Engineer. I'm here uh, joined tonight uh, with the applicant, Mr. Gallinelli. We're here tonight requesting to uh, amend the order of conditions uh, that was issued for this property uh, to reference this uh, new plan. Um, this project was approved under a notice of intent uh, to uh, raise and rebuild an existing dwelling. And as part of that uh, approved um, application, there was um, a patio that was to be rebuilt. And on the original plan, you see where I'm 
pointing on the screen here, it's this patio location that was approved. Uh, what the applicant would like to do is to uh, relocate that patio to this area over here. Um, this is a slightly smaller uh, patio area um, than uh, the previously approved one. On this patio, he would uh, also like to construct a uh, outdoor kitchen area um, that would be located uh, on the patio and constructed of uh, stone um, or be masonry uh, construction. Um, you see that the patio is located um, outside outside the zone A to the coastal dune. Um, it is within a velocity zone. Um, it has moved uh, further away from the resource area and the overall footprint of the patio has been reduced from what was previously approved. Um, uh, the applicant can go into further detail about the patio and grill area uh, if you have questions for him. Um, barring any questions, we would respectfully request that you um, issue the um, amended order of conditions and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Yes, Mr. Chairman, has everybody had a chance to go out to this property? Mm -hmm. Yes. Everybody? Yes. Okay. So there's a couple of things. One, um, as you all saw, that outdoor kitchen is currently under construction. Um, it was being constructed without a permit. So, um, which in this case actually might be beneficial to the board because we're going to see actually what this outdoor kitchen wants to look like. Because usually we'd see just the patio and a blurb that says outdoor kitchen. But the staff has some serious concerns what's being constructed out there. I mean, this is your velocity zone. That fireplace on the corner is how hot? as tall as I am it's so almost 12 feet. big um, so my question Matt and this is probably something your client can answer is how high is the cinder block wall around that fireplace going to be because that fireplace towers over our agent here um, it's, it's a big mm -hmm. structure it's a it's a, a like a cinder block structure and I have concerns with that kind of structure being in a velocity zone Oh, so that's kind of th where the staff is, is kind of, because had we not had the opportunity to visualize it, you know, we wouldn't have kind of, I don't think, asked the appropriate questions of what this outdoor grilling area might be. Because this is a very substantial cinder block structure in your velocity zone. That said, um, Matt, can you revise the plan to put the outdoor shower area on it? Sure. Because there is an outdoor shower area going right adjacent to the deck. So that's going to kind of be within that B buffer zone area. So I think on your original plan you had it as gravel, but now we see that it's being encased in like a little fence area and there's two kind of plumbing spigot things protruding out of that and the raised platform for mechanics was not on the original plan so it, it did appear um, as after the fact and Jamie usually I ask where the mechanic the mechanical um, uh, units are going to go um, I did try to go back into the minutes to see if that was answered and I didn't see it I don't know if you remember um, and the only other thing is the defense. There's a stockade fence in the velocity zone as well um, that was not applied for or approved. Um, so those are the only um, kind of issues that the staff went out there and, and observed. So we have the existing platform. I don't really think that's going to be an issue. It's outside of your buffer zone to the dune but it is something that was and actually about that raised platform 
it looks like it extends beyond where the condensers are. Why is the extra room up there? Is it for somebody to be able to navigate around those condensers? Uh, he'll have to answer that. Okay. Okay. Uh, with regard to the fence, there was, uh, if you're talking about the fence to the east, that's the neighbor's fence, and there was an agreement between the applicant and the neighbor that during construction he would rebuild his fence. Uh, it was an existing stockade fence. Um, so I'm not sure if that's the fence you're talking about. The white, so if you're talking about the east, that is the fence I am talking about. Yeah, that was uh, Henry Herman. Um, it was in a butter, and they worked together to replace his fence during the construction. It's nice of someone to ask us. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Would no. you like him to answer the questions now, or do we want to go through the, the board, board first? I mean, does Brendan, do you have anything to add? No, we had all the points. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Bruno Gallinelli of One Opie Circle, and uh, hopefully very soon of uh, 117 Surf Drive. We had an occupancy permit a few weeks ago and we started using the house. I appreciate the town very much, the neighbors, and uh, hope to make this a full resident of ours. When, uh, I just like Matt, thank you by the way, Matt. When we had the original uh, uh, order of condition in September of two years ago, we, had a, we asked and we had the, uh, granted a permit to rebuild an existing uh, period deck with a uh, cement wall cement wall ran right along this way and the original plan actually of the existing house also showed that cement wall right here. Uh, after the house was built, I realized that uh, the stairs cut this patio in a half. And for me to build a patio on the same uh, location, which was be practically impossible, I would have to go the full extent of the 520 square feet. And I looked too much cement, too close to the sensitive area too, I thought. So by relocating on the opposite side, I was able to build 386 square feet, 140 square feet less, and still accomplish the same thing because it connects with the flow of the house. All along I thought, my mistake, I mis uh, misunderstood that this would have been uh, something you do on the ESPO built plant because you build in less square footage, less impact on everything else. On top of it, uh, the, st the stone wall, the cement wall that was here, we put it on this side to accommodate the grilling area. I have a picture. So we can talk about the This is the existing condition. the whole uh, grill area, which is basically 10 feet on the left side and is seven and a half feet on the right side. In between there, there is a, I call it a, a grill barbecue because I grew up in a small village just like Plymouth Pilgrim Foundation in there and we used those days everything cooked into the, the grill area. On the right side of that, there's gonna be a wooden box and on the left side, there's also going to be a wooden box for storage. And right after that, there's going to be a barbecue, gas barbecue for emergency need, right away. And on the left, a uh, recycled bin under the cow. The whole thing is kind of high, 36 inches high, just like the old uh, cement wall that used to be on the other side, 36 inches high. Uh, I didn't think that anything on top of this would bring any impact because there's no additional runoff. 
there's no additional uh, impact into what's existing in Pervious area. As far as uh, the, uh, the surrounding about the uh, uh, mechanical room, the compressor and the uh, generator, they do need 36 inches clearance. That surrounding is completely open on the bottom. Hmm? It's just supported from the house. So there's no pervious surface that would uh, impact anything anymore. The fence itself on the side of Henry Herman, on my right side, there was an original stockade fence, which is running, run down, it's fallen apart, and we had an agreement with uh, the neighbor that I would put a new one in front of him. But behind that, there's a fence which actually is buried into the ground. I kept mine elevated all around. I read on the bylaws and I read on the regulation what to build the new fence. I also said that you could need an additional permit. The rest of the fence is open pickets. It's four feet fence all around. And uh, there was one more question, Jennifer, that uh, concerned. Outdoor shower. The outdoor shower, it's basically, uh, I don't remember for sure where it was depicted before. It wasn't. Yes, it was. And what it mentions on the plans, Rinsing station. It does mention on the original does plans. It? Show me the I don't see. Okay. Rinsing station to be built. Does it? Yes. It says rinse station. Okay. okay. Where is the rinse station? I knew there was an area where it was that said gravel. It was gravel already. Yeah. Rinse station. Is oh, okay. Well, well, guess what, Mr. Um, um, it's on the wrong side. So where you have it located currently is not where it was located on your original plan. So s part of the staff's concern is that you did all of this additional work without a valid permit, okay? You went ahead and, and started the work without actually getting the approval from the board. So your rent station is on the west side of your proposal and now it's on the east side, correct? It's, it's not on the proposed plan, it's on the existing conditions plan. Yeah, it's on the other side. So right now it's on the east side of the house. So if you're looking at the house with the water, oh, it's um, the beach behind you. That's the existing. It's on the thing. right side of the That's house. The house they tore down. Find out the head I built on the left hand side. This is the proposed plan, and it doesn't show hmm? rent station. Head I built on the left hand side would encroach the property line setback. Well, I understand, sir, but you know we kind of need to look at these um, amendments prior to you undertaking them this is completely my fault i understand i am i apologize i'm sorry i didn't realize that stuff like this which i thought was technicality thing could be done at the asp built and needed to go through amendment i really apologize i beg your pardon it's my fault my mistake okay and second of all um although you say that your platform holding the um mechanics is is not impervious surface. The board takes kind of a bird's eye view, so it's not actually extended off your deck. It is on post. It, you're you're holding that thing up with with two bows, so that is kind of a bird's eye view. The board does not consider that cantilevered. So, you know, we would have. It's a it's a simple um, it's a simple addition, but in you know, hind it should have been on the original plan. It's a simple addition, yeah. but it's been a that said. That said, also the existing um, proposed wall, somebody have a scale? So the existing wall of the proposed wall you had on your original plan, sir? Uh, that's a this is on. the original. This yep. I know, I know. Foot Hang 20. On. Hang on. Hold up here. Was 10 feet long? Well, they were a little bit of L-shape, if I remember right, at the time. Yeah. But, uh, and so the wall you you were currently building is is you know a bit larger than that. Actually, quite a bit larger because yeah, uh, probably a few feet larger. I agree. The deck it's also 140 feet smaller too, though. No, I understand that, but uh, my concern is not over the impervious surface in a velocity zone. So we we look at different things. We look at resource area buffer where we look at the impervious surface with a velocity zone. I'm looking at a, a, a vertical barrier or something that's going to displace floodwaters or something that's going to basically break apart in a large storm event. Um, so 
again, my concern is with this wall that now you're wrapping around your patio and with um, a chimney that's at least seven to eight feet tall. It's a solid structure in a velocity zone. So th those are just the staff's concerns. The board can take it up. I'm just pointing out some of the, the issues on the property that were undertaken prior to the amendment. That's all, Mr. Chairman, unless Brendan has anything to add. There, there is no wind station on the original plan that we approved, just to let you know. I thought you just said I there did, was a I did, but I was reading off the existing conditions plan. We have both of them. There's existing the conditions existing before we did it, and then there's proposed. Okay. We may have had that in the description uh, so for the, the project that included a rinse station. The existing That's conditions. The existing, right. The yeah. house that they tore down. The proposed doesn't have a rinse station, yeah. doesn't have an AC. Yeah, it's right here, and the AC unit's right there. Okay, so I was right. It, I had seen that it had said gravel area where the rinse station was, so. No, the rinse station was not on the approved plan, as it, it turns out, but, um, I mean, those types of things. It, the area was gravel. It was determined to be gravel in that area. I just want to point out that it is becoming a rinse station where on the plan that you approved, it's just like a gravel area. Um, and also, there is, Matt, a pipe coming off of that downspout that's going under the rinse station. Where is that going? Is that going into a drywall? Pipe is going to a drywall, yes. It is going into yeah. a drywall, okay. It actually needs to be repaired. If you were there, they drove over and it's uh, uh, in the water, but that's, there's four drywall on the property and that's one of those pipes. Okay, that's fine. Just wanna make sure that it's and going into a drywall. And the shower is gonna be a gravel shower. Well, uh, I'm just shower. saying, Mr. Mr. Rinse station, we call it shower, but yeah, it will say rinse station. Um, so a couple, couple things to consider with regard to the wall. Um, uh, around the grill. So the uh, elevation of the ground around here is around elevation five. That wall uh, would reach, if it was 36 inches high, up to elevation eight. Um, if there was um, a hurricane or a significant storm, most likely the wall would be underwater. Um, so in, in to worry about it breaking apart, um, it's possible it could break apart but it most likely wouldn't turn into debris that would be uh, pushed downstream um, or into other properties, uh, such as if you had wood structures or things like that. So th there is, if, even it, if, with it being in the velocity zone, um, it is a patio, it is masonry structure. Um, it, it, it won't po pose that uh, harm to uh, uh, adjacent dwellings or structures downstream from uh, storm surge, and um, it is low enough that um, it, it should be underwater in a fairly short amount of time, so it wouldn't be um, causing a significant deflection or um, changes in, in storm surge patterns. Um, so just for consideration. Matt, are you saying that when the water hits that it's not going to become storm debris like wood does? Correct. Okay. Blizzard was 78. I was seven years old, so I just told the entire town how old I am. Mm -hmm. um, there was a boulder yeah. that was bigger than my little seven-year-old person that was taken, thrown was through mm -hmm. at the time, I think it was Bert's restaurant, and landed in the middle of the restaurant. So I'm sorry, but if there's a storm and a significant storm surge, that, that structure, that tower kitchen is probably gonna get destroyed. The tower, yeah, that's, that's yeah, definitely that's a goner. It, this is gonna be, and this cinder block wall might break apart, so. It's possible it could break apart, but yeah. it's not gonna act like wood. It's not gonna drift downstream and get caught underneath piles and and cause other damage to other structures. I I, I'm just that. trying to I point I that out. That, Matt, and That's I'm all just going for to your for your consideration. Uh, yep, I'm just going to respectfully all. disagree with you on that. Um, that's it. Those are just the only points the staff had, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Okay. 
for pretty much that. Okay. Well, I'll tell you how. Well, <laughs> number one, number one, it's oh, you've apologized already, so you don't have to apologize again. But it always is disturbing to go out to a site. And your presentation, you must have realized that most of us would have visited the site. Your presentation I, I, that's was as a, this if this is why Bruno is here tonight. Is yeah, to but your presentation explain. was as if, and this is what he's planning to do. But in fact, it's already been done. Not well, half of it's be, been done. The staff shut them down last week. Yeah, but having be, said be, that, it's been a long time process. I actually met uh, with Kevin Island back in October. I yeah. Think well, ha have it. Well, you met with him, and he didn't tell you. Uh, back in October, about what my plans were going to be, and basically, by the time we really get to this, I just misunderstood the whole process. Yeah. Well, you have a, also had a builder working off these plans, and your builder should have read the order the of conditions. The builder had nothing to do with the, the patio, basically. Actually, no, the builder did do the patio, but uh, this contracting right now is done by Clover Design. He, he's contracting it himself at this point. Oh, all right. Well, anyway, I don't want to get into that. I, I just want to point out that that's always a disappointment. But having said that, having done the analysis, if you look at the original plan, your, I mean, the original conditions, and then look at what your plan was, where you plan to put this patio is where the house used to be. You moved the house back, and this patio and the, and the tower is where there was a house. So I think if it had come in originally, it would have been approvable. So does the board want to see these types of outdoor kitchens everywhere in Riverall Station? No. Okay. Well, the question is, if there's a house I that's think being that moved back. I understand that. And it's part of the, the, the footprint. So the analysis that you would have to do, Matt, is to see whether there's any additional footprint. Because when the house was moved back, it's moved in a little different configuration. So you would have to say whether there's an addition, you know, more than 200 feet, square feet addition. So when we, when we house. originally did it, yeah. we ended up being, I, th I believe, a, a hair smaller in total coverage than what was approved. Well, I'm just saying you should give us And that. now we're actually even smaller because this, this patio footprint is smaller than the previous approved patio. So er well, it has nothing to do with the patio. I'm saying you would consider this as part of the footprint of the house now. Footprint of the house. <coughs> I'm not following. I'm sorry, I Betsy. I mean, I wouldn't see. I wouldn't see this as a as a, an approvable project if somebody said I had a I had a whatever in the A zone, and now I want to put this giant tower in the A zone. I mean, A buffer zone. I I, I see what you're getting at. This you know is in the. This is in the. The house footprint category so that's what I'm saying so is so is it more it's is more of a velocity zone issue for the staff right. that's it I, no I know it's a velocity zone issue but the question is when they move the house back which they did do did they how much larger did the house get that's what I'm saying did the house get larger or did it stay the same and that this is less than 200 square feet? That's all I'm asking. Originally, just so you know, on the, pl on the plan of reference for this site, the existing lot coverage by structure, dwelling deck, stairs, and raised platform was, I'm just 25.4%. Proposed lot coverage by structure, dwelling deck, stairs, and raised platform was 25.4%. Existing lot coverage by structure, parking, and paving was 29, and now it's 36. There is an increase. So there is an increase. And if you anyway, want to talk about velocity zone so issues, actually, Betsy, um, I believe that original house. Matt, was that original house the, a one-story or a two-story? The increase, uh, I'm sorry. Was the original house a one-story house or a two-story house? No. I can't remember. One-story. One-story. So now this, this structure? It's two-story. It's two-story. So if you want to talk larger, Betsy, are we talking footprint in the velocity well, zone or I'm larger or sheer material in the this structure is elevated above the velocity no, zone. Uh, I mean, if you're going to look at it, if you're going to look at it that way, we I don't, don't we don't have that. an upper limit for a velocity zone. Anyway, if if the legs are cut out, 
it's all in the velocity zone. All right, so we so where we are right now is we have a reduction in <coughs> approved from uh, what was approved for patio area to uh, patio area now. I, I see that area. the problem is the grill. The, pro the so problem is a m large eight foot tall masonry structure in the velocity zone. So that's going to be like, um, is it going to be stone faced? Is that the it's pallet is stone? Veneer stone face. Uh, veneer stone face. So we're going to have little stone veneers that are going to be, you know, that are possibly, yeah, in the velocity zone as well. We saw that under the pallet. Okay. I, I, Betsy, to answer your question, I, I can't give you the answer at this moment of if I include the area of that grill and compare that to the total area of the house in, in comparison to the previously uh, or the existing. So I would have to do that for you too. Well, all I'm saying is where the grill is is where there used to be a house structure. Understood. And then I, I'm just saying that and then we can discuss it. Nobody's mentioned about this picket fence in the rezone as well. Not the stockade fence. No, the picket fence. But the picket fence is nowhere on any plan in the rezone. And that's another precedent that we've never, unless it was, I think there was one over off of Monont because cars were going through their house. Oh, Nobody the end of Central. It. And that was because they had like 13 times cars went through their house. And we allowed a like huge timber railed fence so like that a highway fence yes like a highway mm -hmm. fence because it was a public safety issue and the town encouraged it as well that's the only time i can ever remember us allowing a, a fence in a v-zone so that being said the fence needs to be addressed as well the the picket fence stockade i don't even know who permitted that if it was there if it was there before maybe it was permitted before i have no clue um but again that we'll have to look into that again I'm reading your notes, Matt, and it says clearly that the existing lot coverage was 27, 2,777. Now it is 3,382. So because you're of saying there's a reduction. Where's the reduction when it is 605 feet more? That, that's because the parking uh, number went up. That, that number includes lot coverage by structures, parking, and paving. So. The and that's an existing lot coverage by structure, parking, paving, 2,770 square mm -hmm. feet. Shows Proposed lot coverage by structure, parking, and paving, same three items, is now 605 feet more. So where's the reduction? Well, the, the, the reduction is between the patio. That, that lot coverage calculation includes the entire driveway. Dwelling. I'm not looking at the dwelling. We were talking about lot. He, they keep telling Maybe us that the patio is less. I think what he's saying is the driveway was originally gravel, and now it's paved. paved. So that's that, the extra feet. So it's an increase. Yeah. So, so, so this, that's the increase. This is a zoning um, lot coverage calculation where it includes parking. And if you don't have paved parking area, you figure two parking spaces. So if it's a gravel area, you figure two parking spaces in your in that calculation. Because this went to uh, a cobble uh, uh, drive area, we included the, the total area. So that's that's why that number is different. But when we look at the, uh, I mean, the, the structure was built as it was approved. Okay. So then if we look at the the patio comparisons, that's where I'm saying there's a reduction between what was approved and the proposed patio footprint. Footprint is what we're talking about. Okay, so did we approve the pavers? Yes. Or, okay, because I'm looking at stone driveway to remain. We, we discussed. No, that's in this amendment now. That's in that's this in amendment this now. But in the old one, it says existing stone drive to remain, and now we have to be replaced with pavers. Yes, we added that to this because we had talked to staff about the pavers well, a, a long okay. time ago when they were doing the construction um, and they okayed the pavers, but because we're coming back to modify the plan of record, that's why we included that to it so that when you do the certificate of compliance, that staff can go out with a plan that matches exactly. Okay, so, and I will concur with Jen as far as you saying that it's not like 
forward to the blossom. Um, I, Hurricane Carol's chunks of pavement and resentment were going through the air um, during that. And I don't know what's worse, a board floating or flying or a cinder block as a projectile. Um, things the size of houses. And things the size of houses. houses. Go, disappear. Go big well, what happens with a lot of the storm debris is the wood and stuff floats and floats downstream and then gets caught under pilings, creates more surface area, <coughs> creates a more more force against them and causes damage. So that's what we, uh, that's what's seen in these storm situations. What I'm saying the, the, the is the that these lifetime. these stones are going to fall out of that stream. They're not going to get caught downstream underneath pilings. That's all I'm it's saying. Velocity, well, so the they get caught hurricane. up and they're gonna be flung inland. Surf drive is flattened in the 38 hurricane. So I the, the improvement to the surf Yeah, and in Hurricane Bob, zone. all those cottages on surf drive were on the other side of the pond. So like, uh, literally. we're not there. All I'm concerned about is the precedent that we're gonna be starting to allow cinder block walls and cooking areas and I mean, this is, this, it's a big thing. And it's, it's a not, big structure. It's, it's not your parboiled grill that you roll in during the hurricane and you chain it to the upstairs deck. This thing is huge. And if, we're, if this is the road we want to go down and people have them, that's fine. Uh, you know, we just have to make that determination or, or finding that this is okay. On, on the, I'm sorry. Sure, I'm all done. On the original plan, that we approved. Was there a description of the cooking area? No. No. Okay. This was only legally done. Okay. Second. Or without a permit. Without a permit. Secondly, so it was only described as a patio? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. The work was stopped last week? Correct. Uh, you uh, submitted this uh, report, uh, this letter stated is that two weeks ago. I'm sorry, submitted, uh, oh, the application this, for this, for this? The application for this? I don't remember exactly when it was submitted, uh, but it, it was, was submitted several weeks ago. May 22nd? May 29th. May 29th. 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 May 29th? Yep. Oh, it's dated May 22nd, but it was received May 29th, okay. Um, I understand and, and I believe that you had all good intentions. What I'm trying to figure out is when was it discovered that the plans were somewhat different from what had previously been approved by this board. It was discovered what? by staff last. What? No, I don't think that's what he's asking. So when did we discover plans were different we or when did he want to build the grill? Did he know that, the, did he know when he was constructing it that it was different from the plan? built in October of last year, the patio grill. October of last year, when I, I decided to move to the left, it was smaller, further away, we were doing all the cement work. Okay, and you assumed it was just a minor change and you wouldn't have to, okay. It was, it was less impact, I thought, it was 140 square feet less. Yeah. I, un I understand uh, and you know, you're entitled to your viewpoint, all right? They have a professional responsibility to know what's going on, and they have to sign In paperwork that they reviewed yeah, before their condition. I know. So if who? So basically, you're telling me that your builder put that patio in, correct? I d was not a part of his original contract. The patio. It was not part of his original contract. The, the, the patio was supposed to be built on the right hand side. Yes, we know that, sir. When did this patio go in? Patio went on, I, if I remember correct, probably in the late fall. In the late fall. Who constructed the patio? The patio was constructed 
manual was constructed by basically Longfellow Design, which they were doing the work. And, uh, okay, so Longfellow Design puts a mechanical um, structure in because I looked at the architecturals and it wasn't on that zoomy. And to put the patio in a different area without coming in to talk to the staff. That's what you're saying. So the patio went in. Well, they basically, like I said, they followed my instructions, my fault. I told okay. them that the patio should be this big to get this smaller. I will not blame long term design for this big. And my other condition is still in effect. If I have to just have an arrow and put it on the other side, I, I don't know uh, what this is going to mean, but uh, okay. I'm talking with lesser impact than I'm showing it. When we talked, when Bruno and I talked about going through the amended order process, if I understand correctly, I think he thought that that was a, it was a formality. I thought it was an administrative decision after uh, I was wrong, but that's what it is. Well, actually, pa Bruno, the, pa the, p the I mean, sorry, I can't pronounce your last name, so. Faganelli. Faganelli, Mr. Faganelli. The, the the patio itself is, is not the issue. We, we switch, the patio at grade is not the issue. We switch patios all the time. What's at issue here is, one, it was done without the knowledge of the staff or the commission, okay? Even small changes, you signed an order of conditions, you recorded an order of conditions, and it specifically says that any small change needs to come back to the commission to get approved, okay? That said, if it was just the patio, if it was just the at-grade patio, I think this would not have gone more than five minutes. It's the fact that you're adding to the patio this large outdoor grilling area that the commission and the staff are grappling within our velocity zone. We take the velocity zone in the town very seriously. Um, and having these types of solid structures is of concern to us. What also is concerned is not only did you undertake the switching of the patio before getting permission, but you started building this stone structure, this solid wall stone, eight foot high, seven foot high fireplace without Permission. Well, I, I caught by surprise myself on that. Uh, there was a prefab I was not around, <coughs> and they installed the high, and I put so, and then my wife said, what is this messy thing? What, what was that, sir? They installed a what? Then, then I installed the, the grill, the wood grill, the pine grill, whatever you want to call it. I was not around, and then I saw it so high. This was just a couple of days before that. Said to myself, why is it so high? And I asked the manufacturer, I said it's because of the smoke situation. That does not need to be so high. That could be back down to only one flue line. I mean, instead of the whole eight feet above the fireplace, it can only be two feet, and you will never see it from the street or anywhere above the line. Oh, you can see so that from the road, sir. Now you can, but not with two feet above. He, he's saying, he's what he's saying talking the Lord, about sir. is that you can reduce the height of that. Oh, okay, got it, got it, got it, got he, it. He, he's, he's, but it, it isn't a visual uh, issue, okay? Although, I strike that. I mean, when you go in and you first see the thing, it's it oh, has an impact. Yeah, it's okay. Fine. So, so he's willing to reduce the chimney down to one flue. Would it, was that four? Uh, no, actually, a uh, full three blocks. Uh, it is reduced by uh, four feet, I think. Yeah, I don't think okay. that's the issue. The, the issue is that there's a still a larger still structure, a structure, plus there's wall. St stone wall to either side. <laughs> I think the shorthand version of what we're saying here is it, it looks like, well, you definitely have a beautiful home in a beautiful location. And if you had gone out to uh, 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 Home Depot and bought a $400 grill and put it out there, everything would be fine. But given the massive, and I 
don't use that word lightly, size of what is proposed <coughs> as the cooking area, uh, I don't think there's enough support to allow it to remain in the velocity zone. I think we've covered most of the topics that we could have possibly covered. Can I move on? Excuse me? Oh, I think we have taken too much time with that. Mark? Well, the expense of spending more time. I'm sorry? I, I the expense of spending more time, uh, I recognize this is a, a structure of some sort in the, in the velocity zone. Among the options we have are get rid of it completely build it to some kind of level which is presumably adequate, maybe, uh, and there's already grace there to let water get by, which would require, in effect, just for a house foundation, if it were a modification to a house that was already in the velocity zone, you could do that, and you'd have to build water places where water can get through, and there already are in this structure. So in some sense, this structure would pass what we would allow for a addition to a house in the velocity zone. So I'm not sure we have to get too upset about the structure. And yeah, we can be indignant about the fact that we did it without our permission. But uh, beyond that, we've got to move forward. We've got to get rid of this ind indignation and say, what can we do? How can we make this so it's something we can live with and he can live with? Mark, First, what grade are you talking about? Pardon? What grade? Right here and this side. So okay, this structure is not finished yet. Well, this is going to be enclosed. This is going to be solid structure. They okay, said that. Okay, I didn't that. understand that. Yeah, I this is not finished. These breaks that you see is because we stopped from working. I don't understand. There's one on break on the side which isn't there. And I, I, I don't know. I'm not an engineer of that sort, but I can imagine oh, okay. if you just yeah. put an opening in behind me. where right. your fireplace would be done. So we couldn't accept that in. The height of the wall is pretty much where it's going to be. No. It's very close to the height of the wall. Uh, That's four what blocks. Consider it as an amendment. Four blocks, yeah. Four blocks plus a consider. probably a cap. Right. Still, I think if you had a just a simple breakthrough uh, to the left of the fireplace, I think that would be fine. But are they going to probably need our beat the state law on, on foundations? Yes. Gas, water, electrified. Hold on. Are you all set? I didn't want to cut you off, Maury. No, I just don't see. I, on this, on the plan we got in the amendment, no maybe wall. I'm missing something here, but I don't see the stockade fence. Is this the plan? That, yeah. Is it? We, I don't see the new split rail fence out front. I don't see the cooking station. Um, I don't see shower. the shower, and I don't see the utilities and how they're going to be installed because this is probably either going to have There's water, no water or gas. There. Yeah. There's no water there, and uh, everything pretty much is going to be uh, battery operated, and there might be a couple solar light if the fireplace. Battery uh, operated? Solar. Oh, solar. I'm sorry. I thought you said battery. Uh, the, uh, the barbecue, it's ignited just like any other barbecue. There's a battery. You just flip it and uh, ignite on the propane. And the, uh, the, the lights on the on all the fireplace, I did run some contracts in the past, but I wasn't promised to use anything. Uh, basically, everything will be solar if I put any lights, and uh, battery operated will be required for the barbecue. So it's just a little propane tank to run it? Propane tank and uh, startup ignition. You're not, running, you're running, you're not running the gas line over there? I did run a gas line, but I bought a propane barbecue there because it cooks faster. Uh, that's basically why it's going to be used uh, at this point. I think when we have an amendment, Matt, you should put all the things that are on the on the site. On but the, the kitchen's plan. not even on the plan. I mean, it's a, it's a tropic. The, the amended plan doesn't have all the features that are on the site right now as an as built. You want to continue? Better. Or if not? We, uh, or do you want us to close Jamie it? Has it. Is, are we all set? Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll continue. Okay, we'll continue it. Um. July 10th is the next available month.
your agenda is way for full of the July 10th. Because we're not meeting on the 19th. So at the request of the applicant, um, I make a motion to continue to July 10th. Second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion from the board? Any public comment? Okay, so the motion is for continuance to July 10th. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you, Matt. Next up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Have a good night. Under other business, Dennis Downey, about a concerns regarding Zero Vineyard Street, lot 479. Give me one second to help Mr. Downey. Uh, Mr. Chairman and I. Um, I haven't done this in a while. Issue? Um, I'm assuming before. it is, but it's before yeah, I yeah, asked. Yeah, uh, okay, it, are you fine like it? Uh, yep. I'll okay, it okay so basically, yeah. right here, yeah. and then go on that, and everything will be displayed up there. Awesome. Okay? Yeah. And if you have any problems with that, you can let us know. Hello. Um, Mr. Chairman, this agenda item um, is here because the, the Downies have um, expressed some concern with the continued work at Zero Vineyard Street, and they wanted the opportunity to address the board. This is not a hearing, this is just a, a meeting, and Mr. Downey would like the opportunity to um, kind of relay some of the concerns. The board might remember, for those of you that do not come into the office daily, um, that um, Last year, we had an enforcement order on this property when they were altering the coastal dune. They had cut the coastal dune. The Downies alerted the town to that. And after several weeks, the, the, we scheduled an enforcement order. Um, they were told at that time to comply with the order of di conditions and um, stop cutting on the coastal dune. Um, unfortunately, when the staff did go out to try to discuss the issue with the applicant last summer. Brendan and I were asked to leave the property. So we couldn't really truly determine what had happened out there. So we issued the order of conditions, stop cutting the coastal dew, comply with the order of conditions. That brings us to today. You're aware of some of the issues that we've been having out there, Mr. Chairman, and Mr. Downey's here to just kind of present his concerns to you. Thank you. Um, thank you for the board for, for this time. Uh, my name is Dennis Downey. I live at Vine uh, 49 Vineyard Street. I've lived there for 30 years. My wife's family has lived there for almost 60, 60. Is this working? No. Yeah, that's for the, can you speak up a little bit? Because that doesn't come to us. That, that just Actually goes to the does, TV. Yeah, oh. right it goes, who, TV. how do I talk to, just talk to you? How's yeah. that? Okay. How's that? Yeah, oh, that's, that's good. Okay, that's, yeah, I can good. do that. Uh, my name is Dennis. <laughs> My name is Dennis Downey. Um, I, I live in this house here, uh, 49 Vineyard Street. Um, my wife's family has had the house for almost 60 years. We've lived there for 30 years, and we've raised our family there. So I'm coming as a, uh, uh, an abutter, but also as a citizen who's lived across the street from this beach. Um, and it's a beautiful beach. And I'm very concerned about our, our new neighbor and his plans and what he's done to come into the beach to completely transform the look of the beach and, I believe, the strength of the beach. Our original, we saw his original notice of intent, which was in um, March of 2017. And his original plan was to, with a machine, remove all of this. Everything was to come out. And then he was going to plant five rows of the plant that he wanted. And we, I can show you storm pictures that aren't even the hurricane that would show water that would come right up to here because that dune is... How recent is this? This is from last summer. 
Thank so you. what we're looking at here, as you can see, so there's a couple of things I want to say. There's two things right away. Is This is a beach that runs for about 400 yards. And if you look at it from the air, it's all one beautiful formation. And he's come in and he owns this chunk of it. And he's taken that chunk and he's changed the look of it for his own private purposes relating to summertime activities. And those that even just that look persists all through the year. So he's cutting vegetation, he's removing vegetation. You can see that there's this natural swath that goes across of seagrass and then new seagrass down here. Now Betsy, you described it that all of these dune beaches start with seagrass and then as that collects it compacts a bit and then the woody shrubs behind it. We have pictures, uh, family pictures going back into the 60s that show almost none of this woody stuff here, certainly <coughs> none of the trees. Um, but it's built, it's built up over time. There's a cycle of storms I would ask you to consider with, with hurricanes that um, we were here for Hurricane Bob, which was a, only a, a very mild hurricane com comparatively. And it just came in and knocked down all of the vegetation on the dunes. For, uh, and none of these trees were here at all. They all come po post Bob. So the, the, the dune builds up, and then one of these storms comes in and knocks everything down. And so you don't want to start to just change what's there because you need it for when that, for when that storm comes. Uh, the other thing is, is that I think it's all one natural formation. And to change it like this, um, where you're cutting out a whole swath, you can see that this is some property right here. And there's none of this seagrass that comes right here, stops, because he's removed it. And he's cut out these angles here, the straight, right? The straight angles, they're right angles. Um, I'll show you a couple of other. How do I get back to? I got it, Mr. Tony. Oh, oh. thank you. Ben, I can show you a little ben, bit. Ben, is that rack on the beach too? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to show you the machine he used. He Brendan, I might actually need you. He, oh. You have to use the microphone because of the the TV. The I'm right here. Screen recorded. Jan, just use the arrows on the keyboard. Yeah, I know. Oh, the keyboard. Okay, Mr. Danny, look, you can either go like this. What? Mm -hmm. And it's going to change the picture. Oh, great. Okay. okay. And then to get back to your, um, well, when you need to get back. Uh, okay, we'll don't back go too far. Okay. All right. You can point yours on the mouse. Okay, so these. this is the property. See, this is just the opposite view, right? You're looking across. And again, you can see, see how the, it's all one beautiful formation. It comes down and then changes. It's a completely different view. This is a, na these are all natural growth. This is all cut down. It's straight. Everything's at 90 degree angles. Um, this is what it looks like from here, from, from the beach side. And again, I, I told you the 90 degree angles and the lack of seagrass. It's been pulled out. There's no permit for that. This is under, he's using two things. One is beach nourishment. I'm gonna show you what, what beach nourishment looks like. You allowed him, you permitted him to have 100 cu cubic yards, which is three to four dump trucks. I'll show you what one dump truck looks like when it shows up with, with different sand. Um, it changes the beach completely. His part of the beach, so anybody walking or anybody looking or anybody walking on the road, it's a completely different aesthetic. The, the Falmouth bylaw specifies that aesthetics is a consideration. There was no discussion of aesthetics with what he was going to do. He asked for beach nourishment. The only reason you can have, the only ways you can have beach nourishment from the guidelines is if you're dredging the surround, a, a, a waterway or if you're gonna correct for some storm damage, some erosion. But they presented nothing for erosion, and I can show you the picture before he did any of the work, and you'll see there's no erosion. He's just la he just added another layer of sand to make a flat platform. Um, I may need your help, Jen. So these are the aerials, I, I think, to shows you the, I guess, the artificiality. This is right next to it, you see again. The, this is the natural, this is our beach here. 
comes over here, this is when it all grows. It comes, it stops, it completely stops. There's no more, this should be growing this way. Okay, so how do I get back to that? Um, yeah, okay, so let's go to another screen. Can you take photos and have that on the screen? Oh yes, okay, so this, thank you. So this is another one from up above here. This is what it looks like afterwards. This is what fig juice looks like afterwards. The way you get fig juice like this is you own an excavation company. I'm gonna show you the machine that they use. They put three or four guys who work really hard for two or three days and then go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and they fill buckets and they're changing the structure of the sand. They're taking out everything except sand. And they're moving the, the stone, the shells, everything over to one side. So that you've got perfect Miami Beach for big guests in the summertime. I'll show you the machines. How am I going to do that? Yeah, okay. I, 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 I use Apple, so I don't use. It's okay. Mm, so I want to go back to my main menu so I can see okay, um, so folders, what I have for folders. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, great. Okay. Yep. Shows you the folders right there. Yeah. Okay, great. This is his beach at the time of his notice of intent. <coughs> There's no erosion. This is what it looked like naturally. There is this, this is the breakwater that come in. Sometimes those stones are covered, sometimes they're not. There's no damage. He's gonna add, add um, this is what it looks like naturally going down. It's contoured, right? Shaped by waves and wind, not a platform. Okay, this is, this is earlier. This is what, a natu what it looks like naturally. Okay, so now quickly, how do I get back those? This one? Okay, I think. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you. This is going to be a mix of because I'm, I'm, I'm poor at how I'm doing this, I, I'm just going to run through these, a few of these pictures and, and, and comment on them as we do them. Okay. So this is one of the things that he did. It's not in his, no, it's not in, it's not in his notice of intent or his revised notice of intent, and it's not in his permit. Is, this, is the, this is the building. This is the street side of the building. And originally, according to your plan, According to your plan, you had Maria Hickey, who was the local landscape architect, to had to be, was like the liaison. She was going to be responsible for everything. But then she immediately hired, I guess, his men to be subcontractors. And then we never saw Maria Hickey again. And one of the things that they did was they removed all of the Rosa Rosa under the idea that they were using doing uh, um, uh, removing invasives, they removed all the plants four foot, about four feet in from the street, and they put in this cobblestone, which is not part of their, their, their um, plan. This is what it looks like from up above. You see, this is the next, this is really hard natural. This is what, this is what he's done. It's manicured. But this is all doomed. This is all part of the doom. So we take that off and we put uh, mulch in. These are the, this is the kind of work that he's doing. He can, he can put, this guy works really hard for him. He'll be out there three or four days in a row all day. You see all the bags on the beach. He's filling it with every, everything <laughs> and filling up trucks and taking it away. This is what it looks like when they're done. It's, it's massive. You know, when you say raking and grooming, this is what, this is what, it, what he does. This is the machine that they use. I don't know what it is. It's a, it's, I would describe, I describe it as a beach rototiller. They go back and forth for hours. It's called a sandman. And it picks up, it separates everything else. So at the end, you get this just sand 
And there's no shells, there's no rocks, there's no pebbles. Help me. Um, right there? Yeah, and then right there is part of the shell. Okay. So you see what he's done with, he's removed the four feet of the dune of plants. He added mulch. Now, Jen and Brendan have talked to him, so now the mulch is removed, but the plants have not been replaced. But what it does is it gives him extra parking for his house. Um, we talked about this at the enforcement. His, in, his lawyer said, we don't know whose cars those are. Well, I know <laughs> whose cars they are. They belong to the people in his house. He has a lot of people that come and visit. They share their house generously in the summertime. They've got a long driveway, but what that means is if somebody wants to get out, three or four cars have to move for one to get out. It's much easier to just put them right up there. They park, all, they park on the street. Okay, this is a wedding tent. He's had three weddings there in the last two summers. On the, st on the beach, my wife and I got married. Luckily, we got married at, the, at our house in the backyard. Okay, this is a dance floor he's got. To put a dance floor on a beach, you know, you have to get rid of the contours. You have to make a platform. He's got a raised platform. It's very level. You're walking along the beach. You come and you see this square. It's up higher than the rest of the beach. It's all level. This is, for, this is based on the idea that he's raking and grooming the beach. This is just the, the electricity that he runs across. Okay. All right. Oh, I see. Okay. New sand. So he's only done this one time. He did it in 2017, right away. This is what it looks like to our neighborhood. He comes in with a truck like this and puts sand on the beach. Bobcat goes smashing over the, over the dune. Okay. Look at the sand. Okay, it's a different color. So in the end, for the summer of 2017, he has an orange beach. He's got a square orange beach that's raised above the rest of the beach. Great for putting out tents, having a dance floor, but it's not raking and grooming. It's not maintaining the aesthetic of the beach. This stuff is the natural cobble. It's a real pain in the ass, sorry, it's a real pain when you're trying to cross it to go swimming. We've done it for 30 years. But what he does is he covers it, or he use, now he uses that rototiller to remove it. Um, let me see if I got one other thing to show you here. That may be it. This is our beach. You see, it's a beautiful beach. Um, this is what it should look like naturally. All the way down. That's what it should look like. He's changing it. So, I also wanted to say something about, um, I'm gonna just hand this, but I need these back. <laughs> um, but one of them is an aerial from 2014. He bought the house in January 2014. The trucks, are, the trucks that you see there are his construction going on. You can look right across and you can see a strata of beach grass, separated beach grass, completely gone. Doesn't exist anymore, it's been pulled up. And this is 2017, this longer one. Uh, again, you can, you can see it. He's here and, and he's got his part cut out. It's, you can recognize it by the right angles to the cutting. Uh, these are aerials from the GIS. You'll have to give us copies of that though. That's you have we, we can go and make copies yeah. right now. Do you know how, you see my troubles uh, with the machine. It's really hard for me to have gotten these, believe me. But I'll, I'll just pass them. 
If you pass them down, then Brendan will go to the copier yeah. down the hall and make copies. Okay. So that's so w w during the notice of intent, our biggest concern was the s storm damage of pulling up what would happen if he just pulled up the dune wholesale, which is, was a, his original intention. There was no discussion of what of aesthetics, of significantly changing the aesthetics of the beach, but that's what he's doing. And that's what, I, that's what we can now see. We, we didn't even know it was gonna, going to happen. I wanted to say something about oversight. Um, for this project and maybe for other projects, for being the abutters, we've had, we've borne the brunt of harassment from him because we've spoken against the project. Anytime that we tell Brendan or Jen anything and she has to get back to them, we can expect some kind of retaliation from him. Started the very first night that we spoke here, we went back to our home, stepped out of our cars, and he's not in his house, but he could see us on his cameras up in where he lives, in, off the Cape. And he blasted music. The police, I'll be watching you. We had to call the police to have, it, to have the music stopped. Um, if you, we assumed once the notice of, once the not he was given an order of conditions that basically you guys would take over. So when we saw the plants pulled and the mulch put in, we just assumed that eventually someone would come down and see this and correct it. But what we found is <laughs> the staff is very busy. So they had to ask us for pictures. And as the abutters, it puts us in a very difficult situation with the, with the neighbor who's going to harass us. Um, we noticed we waited for the site visit. We heard what happened in the site visit. They weren't just refused entry, they were abused to, to leave. I think a lot of the notice of intent relies on contractors. In this case, in this case Holmes and McGrath, uh, who, project, who, who brought the project forward and said and suggested that, that it was need, there was a need for beach nourishment with no evidence of any erosion. If it's no, if you're bringing, if you're introducing sand, that sand that I showed you he, he, he used in 2017 is only about a third of what he's, of what he's allowed in the three-year permit. So he could do it every single year. By the next year, it's completely gone. The winter, winter winds take it all away. But for that summer, he's got a nice orange platform. Um, I think that's it, basically. It's, yeah. Jen, has the dune been altered? Um, the dune was altered. We issued the enforcement order when uh, Mr. Downey informed us that the dune had been altered. Um, again, we went down there and we couldn't conclusively say it had been altered again. What is more concerning, I believe, to Mr. Downey is the um, use of that machine. It's separating the cobbles out from the sand. And we allowed him 100 cubic yards. We allowed 100 cubic yards and for him to be able to rake, clean and rake the beach once a week in the summer months. So um, we allowed 100 cubic yards, that over the three year period? That's over the three year period. And I don't believe we got any notification of how much he put in the last time. Well. It was isn't one dump truck. Excuse mm -hmm. me. Isn't, isn't there um, a requirement of um, grain size? Grain size analysis? Yes, we did not receive any. There's, may I say something? There is also a requirement for a beach survey before you put the sand down and immediately after, and none of those beach surveys were submitted. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Can I ask you one more question? So, I mean, it's obvious this was dissolved and it's obvious from your other pictures that there is, you know, there is an area where, where beach grass is taking hold, but mm -hmm. the front is just beach grass. And in, in beach nourishment, you're not allowed to cover that. Cover actual vegetation. Yeah. Well, that's the use of the machine. It just chops up everything. 
Well, you're not supposed to have, you're not supposed to have even be walking in an area that just has beach yeah. grass. Mm. Unless you have, a, you know, a, pa mm. a single path like you do down to the. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Do, do I just yank this? Is that what happened? No. No? Okay. Brenda? Does anybody have any questions for me? Yeah. Oh. Um, just isn't, isn't, yeah, I know. One question. Isn't that Sandman, the thing, the machine that we were warned about? Yeah. Right, right, right. That's right. what we were talking okay. about. Okay. And also, I mean, Jen has, you, I feel like I'm a broken record, but cobbles are part of the, part of right. the beach, part of the volume of the beach. And right. it's being removed. It's being taken out and moved to the side. The fact that the sand is non-compatible is also disturbing because it makes a difference on its erosion rate yep. um, and what the impacts are on the water and eelgrass and everything else. So. And in terms of um, the chairman asked about um, the cutting and we, we watch but we don't watch, we can't watch all the time. I can tell you it was cut. We do have pictures from it being cut in June of 2018 and then again in September of 2018. But most recently it was cut where my wife was pretty sure there was someone cutting but she was driving away. There was no one else, she had no time to stop and see. But you can see it and I'll tell you how. The, um, the, the Rosa Bagoza just blossomed about two weeks ago. And he has some Rosa Bagoza but it's all coming from the side. There's nothing coming up from the top of his Rosa Bagoza. Everybody else's Rosa Bagoza, nature grows in, in the round, in the circle. And he's got straight across the top and it's lower than everybody else's. So he's definitely cutting it and thinks that it's okay. He also pulled a lot of it and now, and was, should have replaced it. Uh, he had a permit to pull invasives only, but he had to replace it with Rosa Ragoza. He's got a whole swath along the street side where he's using for parking that he has not replaced those plants that he's pulled. Let me ask Jen and Brenda. Where, where, where he's talking about now by the street, that where there's where there's granite, and where that. there's granite blocks. Mm -hmm. Is that on? Is that paved? Or it mulch. looks like mulch. mulch. Oh, mulch. it's just mulch. Yeah. Um, it originally was vegetated. But that yes. should all be vegetated. It was all vegetated. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes, it was all vegetated, including so he so he did some work in. Most of this work happened in the late spring of 2017, and it was, I believe it was in the fall of 2017 that he came back and did this addition. No, you know, it was the next spring that he came in and pulled out that swath and laid down, um, uh, laid down the, uh, the mulch and then started to use it for parking. There's stone that he ran all along the street as a border. It wasn't in his original plan, but it was just a detail. Maybe he asked, I don't know, whether we just let that go. He had a part of his plan was to take the existing uh, boardwalk and replace it in kind. But what he replaced it with was a wider boardwalk. You can run a sand, gr a sand machine up ov over it pretty easily. He added 10 posts, and he's got a modern stone stepway up to it that's probably about four feet by four feet. And that was ne that's never in the original plan. It looks nice, but it's completely artificial, and it's it's blocking part of the dune. It's it's killing that part of the dune. So, okay. Thanks. Thank you very much for. Thank your time. you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, do we want to request a um, enforcement order? Well, we have to do something. It seems like it's at, at this total point total noncompliance. Uh, it's kind of obvious. I can just give the board a little bit of background. So, Mr. Downey was um, concerned about um, the use of the machine. The staff had the same concerns once we understood what this machine actually does. Yes, we did see it on the beach last year, but we didn't really understand what it was doing. And um, you have to understand that uh, last year, our office was 
down two people, so it was right. just Brendan and I. Um, that said, um, we did reach out to the homeowner through their attorney. We did set up a site visit. We went, uh, I went out to the site visit with Greg Frazier. Um, we started to go over some of the requirements of the order of conditions when I um, started questioning the use of the machine and I'm talking about the you know, guidance documents from CZM and how the machine was separating out the cobble and how it was changing the form and volume of the beach. Um, I was again asked <laughs> to leave the property. When you and told Greg? never to come back on. That's when you went with Greg? That's when I went with Greg Frazier. Greg Frazier has an incident report written about it. Well, does it, you know. Um, so, I mean, the staff, because the order of conditions says raking, um, you know, we tried to explain that this was a little bit more than raking. Um, again, we were asked to leave. But they're almost And then I was, um, I'm not done. Oh. And then I was issued two public records requests for every wetland violation in the entire town for the last three years. But there's a whole series of things, including including the beach profile. I understand that. The I understand that. So I, I, the staff would be happy to issue an additional enforcement order at this point, like I had discussed it with with the chairman and we just kind of thought that, and Mr. Downey really did want to approach the board and give his concerns um, and let the board see what was going on before. Usually how the staff handles an enforcement issue is that we'll reach out to the applicant, um, attempt to you know work it out before it rises to the level where we have to bring it to the board. In this case, it's just, it's, it's not happening. Yeah, and it's clearly happened on some of the other. And issues. I also sent them an email after um, that initial site with that after that site visit with Mr. Frazier and um, and basically uh, requested they cease and desist using the machine. I sent that on a Thursday or Friday. The machine was out on that beach the following Wednesday. So uh, they are ignoring the cease and I didn't say they couldn't clean the beach. I didn't say they couldn't rake the beach. I said cease and desist the use of the sorting machine. And they are not listening to that directive. So basically they're just doing anything what they, they want, want mm -hmm. and ignoring anything. So there's obviously they're going to ignore the enforcement order. Well, I think if we send an enforcement hearing, they're going to have to address it. The attorney will have to come back. Um, Let's do that. Okay. Yep. Thank you. So we make a motion. So motion. Um, we'll yeah. schedule that for May 22nd, and we will send the letter out tomorrow. May, May 22nd. Um, sorry, June 22nd. June 26th, and we will send the letter out. Public hearing this, so they'll have to go out, sending that one out tomorrow, right? Yep. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yep. So, so we'll put it on for put June 26th for an enforcement and all those issues that we yep. talked about. Okay. Okay. Second. Oh, so I'll, I'll make the motion. Excuse me. Oh, I'll second. Somebody okay. else second it? I just, no, you can second it. But I had a question for Jen. So if they ignored you telling them not to use the screening machine. Correct. Are they just gonna keep doing that until, or is there a way we can stop them from using it? We send Greg down? In theory, the cease and desist, but. We can issue a clear, more definitive cease and desist on the use of that machine. Well, I think that would at least stop I mean, that destruction of the beach for the moment. I, I need to do it under your enforcement order. They're not gonna okay. listen to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. They're you. not going to listen to it. Okay. Can we get DEP to back us up? Um, I'm working on that issue right now. Okay. Um, All right. How about okay. PD? That's, yeah, that's what I was. 
you know, if the, if the board takes a, a, a hard stance on the 26th, um, you know, we'll, we'll get MAS involved and, yeah. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to bring that enforcement order to fruition on the 26th. Any further discussion from the board? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Moving on. Everyone should lose them two nothing. <laughs> End of the first. Vote order conditions. Hold it here. We'll hold it here. We're having an enforcement hearing. Oh. Yeah, that's fine. We'll hold an enforcement yeah, hearing. Yeah, I saw that. Is that what I said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dear God. Susan got it. She's rusty because she bailed on us yesterday. So. Oh. Okay. All right. Vote order conditions. First up, Robert Sperry, 134 Antler Shore Drive, East Falmouth, Mass. This is oh, a pier reconstruction. Right. And moval. Oh, this is the, the moval. The dock. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was only one person who had any kind of issue with this, and he's not with us tonight. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> it should be an easy one. Let's do it. <laughs> Wait a minute. No. Uh, Let's Maury. I wasn't here. No, Maury, you Maury. can go. You can go. You're not on any of this. Mm -hmm. I just feel guilty. <laughs> Don't feel guilty, Maury. Right. We tried to make Peter Every feel guilty last time, but it didn't work. Every one of these people bail on you if they didn't have to it, do it orders work. and conditions. Every one of them would fail. Uh, they sent letters to his home. Like Where's Peter? Five? Yeah. <laughs> um, Let's get well card. Antler, uh, Antler Shores. <laughs> well, we gave Peter a hard time, but he just left. <laughs> um, <laughs> to say hi. So should I now Peter's out? on. Yes. All yep. 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 Say bye, everybody. Yeah, bye. bye. Thanks for visiting. Uh, Lovely, Peter, you're lovely on. to see you, Maury. Yeah, I'm leaving in five minutes. So. Peter, you're on a couple of months. Okay, this is the dock where they have an existing licensed pier. Right. They want to relocate it further away from the property line where they can get it we into. We remember. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. We have no problem with it. We, none of us have problem with it. So. Okay, I will make the appropriate findings. So this. Is legit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, Some brewing guy had a problem with it. Yeah, I know. I'm working on that. I'm hiring. I'm hiring. Um, uh, okay. I'll make the appropriate findings and special conditions regarding the dock. Yes. Because it, you do have to make. It's a licensed. It's a licensed dock. Right. But we're getting it into deeper water. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. It's an improvement to the resource. The yeah. Neighbor. Improvement to the resource right. area. You do need to make specific findings on that. Your staff will make them for you. Okay. Thank you, staff. No problem. Yes. And you made Next. them for us. You convinced us. I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 290 Acapasket Road. Wait a minute. Oh, sorry. Who moved it? Nobody yet. Yeah. I make oh. a motion. A second. Second. They all have Stanley Cup on their arms. Roll south, uh -huh. Peter. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept Courtney's not here. Conditions as discussed. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Same Next time. up, Gerard and Margaret Robinson, 290 Ac Acapuscate Road, East Falmouth, Mass. This quorum is Mark, Peter, yeah, it's everybody. Yeah. Um, house, located yeah. in between the primary coastal bank and secondary coastal right. bank. Oh, right. Yep. So, I mean, staff really <coughs> doesn't have a problem with this house. So it was important for the engineer to articulate. It was important for the art articulate, and it's also important for him to give me the calculations on his form. <laughs> exactly. <coughs> right. So um, it's it's. I wouldn't say it's a, it's going to make the situation better out there. They're pulling it back, but they are increasing the structure. But it's it's not. It's better. An issue. But it's true. Yes. Yeah. It'll yeah. be an improvement to that. And, and the location of the septic will be. Yeah. Brenda, could will. you copy this for me, please? <laughs> wow, you did that on Brad, Steve. <laughs> so I make a motion that we accept as discussed. Second. Second. All right. 
We have a motion and a second to accept as discussed. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Next up, Peter and Lucille Moreni, 165 T ticket path, Falmouth, Mass. Oh, this is Kevin, Betsy, yep. Jamie, Mark, Steve. Yeah. Don't go so fast, Peter. You're on the next one. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to skip this one to go to that one. <laughs> okay, this is <laughs> yeah. the um, stepping right. stones, the enlargement of the patio, the invasive species removal, the cleaning of the beach area, and the relocation of previously permitted uh, I mean, previously required mitigation planting to along the bottom of the oh slope. Yeah. Well, oh. This one definitely just requires some discussion. Sorry, guys. <coughs> the beach plum removal. Right. What was that? The beach plum being pulled yes. and, and moved yes. down. I think most of I think most of the the project the board was okay with. I think the. The sticking points of this project, as the staff kind of watched this board um, grapple with some of the issues, was the removal of the established beach plum that was a right. mitigation area to relocate it down the slope along, to stop the erosion along the path, uh, I mean along the sides of the stairs. The, uh, originally the lack of um, information regarding his invasive species removal, which he did submit a fairly detailed um, plan about how he was going to do the invasive species removal. Um, but I think the board was also concerned with the um, beach cleaning um, mm -hmm. and raking of the, the salt marsh and removal of all the rocks. So yeah. um, if there were any other, I think Courtney had concerns with putting a Brendan, can you open this plan for me? Yeah, that one. Um, a single rail fence along the mitigation area, considering what he's planting there. I don't know if it's particularly necessary. And the I lack think. of grass up to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I yeah. think it's what, like what the, right. the designer had done was shift the stepping stones. So almost the stepping stones are creating that barrier around. Right. Okay. So I'm not quite sure in this instance if the split rail um, would be necessary because it's actually going along an area that's existing beach plum. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what would the board like to do? We'll start with the easy one, the beach. No raking of the beach. They can remove all yeah. trash by hand, all man-made debris. Yeah, don't touch um, the salt marsh. The, so they yeah. cannot rake the salt marsh. Yeah. Okay. And sort of like this one. What is it called? Woggle? What's the stuff that floats up from the beach where it's accumulated? The rack? Rack. 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 Yeah. Leave it alone. I mean, it's okay. all part of the natural system. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they had a tremendous amount from a storm event, would you allow them to contact staff? Well, and they can pick a little oh. bit up and use it as, as the no. moisture. No, no. Oh, the vegetables are. Well, that's what people do all the time. People mm -hmm. collect just said. racks. Right. Then what about the beach plant rake down if you can? I mean, the fact that if you're restricting to doing it by hand, it's going to be limited anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And as soon as you introduce the rake, even manually, yeah. you're. Yeah, first he was going to use a machine like that. Yeah. I don't think he ever actually, Kevin, proposed using machine. He was talking about raking it by hand. Okay. 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 Just to be clear, mm. no rack removal without staff's permission. Right. Okay, that's fine. You guys are the best to us. <laughs> um, he wants to remove a 10-inch oak. At the bottom of the stairs, Brendan just reminded me. Six oh, six inch, I'm sorry. Six inches. Why? I obviously don't know my numbers they're tonight. Put, they're putting back a service barrier on either side. Why of do it. they want to remove the oak? It's almost entirely green. Oh, it is entirely okay. green. Oh. Okay. All right. So then 
They're expanding the patio a bit. They're adding the stepping stones. They're adding a raised counter. So they've done a pretty good job. Wayne has done a, a good job with the mitigation or plantings for that. Then we go to the relocation of this established prior mitigation to alongside the staircase. Do those transplant pretty well? Not a great fit. They're pretty good size, actually. The, the staff's concerns when he was, when, when Wayne was discussing it, when we brought up the size of the roof fall, he started talking about tiering that bank, and that's altering that coastal bank. So staff would have a concern with that. I would also have a concern that these plants have been heavily, heavily pruned. Sure. They basically are just chalked Bad straight plants. across. So when they're going to sprout, they just I just don't think it's going to be successful. It's going to be transplanted and they're going to die. Yes. So if they were to, if they were to, quote unquote, remove those from that area to allow for the the planting plan they would like to do. What I would say is that they could s plant a smaller size mm -hmm. along the stairs. It would cause less impact to the bank. And, much more and I think right. it would just be so ultimately a structurally stronger plant. Yeah. And, and much, there's stuff he wants more, to plant. Much, much more successful. And much yeah. more successful. And the stuff he wants to plant is more manageable for the vista. It is. Anyway, I mean, so basically, they are topping those plants, and no. What I'm saying is, the stuff he's proposing yes, to put yes. in place, in place, a yes. more um, suitable up there. Yeah, there's yeah. lower. They're suitable. It, it it does. It won't. You know, in, in three theory, years, they won't feel the need to just mm -hmm. cut it down. It's I like what you said about the a little bit more manageable. The smaller yep. plants. Yep, I like that. We might normally though tolerate a window. Right. This proves yeah, yeah, that's what I, that's where I was going to come. So maybe swath. 25 feet with the alternative, and then whatever's to either side. I don't know how long that here. stretch is. Right. I'll stretch figure it out. They can only have 25 feet. Right. Right. Yeah, I can't use this. I think that's a good idea. I said that the the board had say. did yeah. the board did discuss during the hearing establishing uh, a vista window, which would require the existing the existing um, beach plum to grow to a height of five feet, because mm -hmm. that's what's in your vista yeah. printing windows, and then allowing a vista corridor. So would you allow them to remove the existing beach plum in that vista corridor and plant there smaller? Yes. 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 Okay, so just to let you know, that planting area, lawn to mitigation, Oh, this. Oh, change out beach plum. So that appears to be. Um, more or less. What is the scale on this? Give me one second, guys. I know the game's on. I'm sorry. We're dedicated. Um, that <laughs> that area, guys, is sorry. There's bugs. Twenty eight feet. Right. Oh well. We knew that. I had it at thirty. You can see it's twenty eight thirty feet. So I'm just leaving a few. So right. All right. So I have one more thing. Okay. So allow them to do that and then yeah. not transplant those particular plants, but. Put not in, remove them. Oh, yeah. You put in, them. I want, yeah. And then put in smaller along mm -hmm. the steps. Yeah. I just, because when he started talking about digging and then tearing them to get it yeah. in, I was yeah. not, I wasn't Agreed. comfortable with that. So I, I have one more thing about the All right. vases. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, he comes here, I, I don't know what his background is, but he wrote up that. And I guess I was supposed to understand that he would hire, I mean, he said it, but, but it wasn't in the narrative that it was going to be a licensed applicator 
right. of yeah. with that. Right. So yeah, I think he probably thought there was a presumption would be made. I mean, well, I didn't make that presumption. Uh, Basically, every time you have one of these 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 projects, when when you have a particular consultant or landscape professional um, um, ecological restoration expert present a plan to you, there is a there is a thing in the order of conditions saying that they are the sole entity that can perform the work unless this board approves an alternate company. So in the case of this, it would be that, you know, to Wayne Tavar, Wet Tech Wet Tech. Uh, Landscaping will be the sole entity to undertake this work under the direction of Wet Tech, unless um, if she happens to employ a license. That's fine, and that's fine. It has to be under Wayne's direction, and if it is not under Wayne's direction, or if the applicant chooses to hire someone else, you're not binding the applicant to the person, but their new restoration or landscape person has to come in and present to this board. Okay. Done. Okay. Make a motion to accept and discuss. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> Call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. It was worth the time. It was worth the time. Lawrence and Denise Rothschild, 3 Hamlin Point Road, East Falmouth, Mass. Uh, this is the pool. This is an yeah. amendment to just right. reconfigure the pool. Right. And I don't. Reconfigure the pool, reduce the size of the patio. Correct. Taking out a few extra trees. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's extremely heavily vegetated lot. Yep. Yeah. I don't believe there's any uh, anything that we just now make a motion to accept as we just so vigorously discussed. Discussed. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Make a motion nope. to. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Oops. Mark, you do realize the Stanley Cup's on, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, while the talk we had tonight was sort of interesting, it didn't cover anything which I wanted to hear. Right. I want to hear about, I mean, he, he talked about more or less state regulations and how they impact, and they impact on the coastal bank. I was much more concerned about what we do in mitigation areas, which are often not on the bank. Sometimes they are, but often they're on the top of the bank where we get big landscape areas. And I, 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 I was just hoping we'd get some information on what is a habitat, what are the right habitats we should be aiming for, and therefore, what kind of plants and spacing and count should we do? Who would be the appropriate? We can reach out to MACC, Mass Association of Conservation Commissions, well, to good. see um, if we could, yeah. yeah, if we can do the thing. I mean, we just automatically think of the DEP circuit rider because they do provide outreach yeah. under the act. But if you weren't, um, if that presentation wasn't exactly what you were looking for, Mark, we can reach out to a couple of people um, that work at MACC, okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested Yeah, and I would think at MACC, if you tell them what, specifically what we're looking for, yeah. they would send well, the appropriate that's person. That's yeah. what we need is the specifics, what you guys want. Yeah. I just yeah. kind of went to the search well, writer, and he's only going to comment on what he can comment from the state. He can't comment about our regulations. MACC? Yeah. He was still very good. So, should. And it was interesting. So there are, just to let you know, when we were talking about this, there are certain areas, there are certain sites that we've gone to where there are spectacular native, yep. you know, an assemblage of native mm -hmm. plants. I've seen Mark, if you if you send me a her naturally, she gave me present hints of where to Not go. Plant. Where, where she had gone. No, that, that are there. That, 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 just, that they just grew there. They grew God and they hadn't there. been. God put them yeah. there. They it was. So they, I was hoping. They're a result of plant succession through the years, <laughs> and it hasn't forest. been right. It hasn't Shame. been well. It might be have been redone since a hundred years ago, but there's no invasives that there have come in. Okay, we haven't covered adjournment, so. Oh, we haven't? No. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Mark.